This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles, on the Rockstar Radio Network. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd on the Rockstar Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Hi, this is Judith Bryles, and uh, I, I have to say that this has been an extraordinarily interesting week. That first I started off with identity theft and having my wallet stolen and purse stolen with a manuscript I just completed in the Seattle airport. Eventually the manuscript showed up, sent from another airline, and they tracked me down because I had my business card in it. And then finding out people have been uh, opening accounts in my name and getting that undone, and then having my computer hijacked itself, deciding that it didn't like any of my emails and it ate everybody. And it's just been that kind of a day. But we're going to have a great show because with me, is Book Baby and CD Baby. And uh, Brian Filson was originally planned to be on and had a an emergency and was pulled away, but there's nothing better than having the partner. And so with this is going to be Chris Robley. And Chris is all things CDs, uh, and we're going to get into CD Babies, and uh, which is terrific because last week we did a show on audiobooks and why they were the, so incredibly important, and they are a billion-dollar-plus industry for the author and publishing. So Chris is going to be able to support us on some strategies here, but he also knows all things about what goes on in Book Baby Land. And we're going to get into some of those areas of, of not so much how do you create an ebook. That's not where I really wanted to go um, because that is what Book Baby does. So we're going to get into what their services are and some of the cost and what some of the things that you do and don't do. But what I really want to deep dive into this hour is so you got an ebook. You got a CD. You're into audio land and all things electronics and cyber land. What in the heck do you do next? And I know Chris is going to tell us, well, you got to work your butt off is what you're going to have to do to get it moving on. But we're going to show you some of the strategies of how to do that. And also we'll get into what is going on in multimedia land and ebooks and even the whole area of, of the do, do it yourself land. So with that, Chris, welcome to your guide to book publishing. Hey, how's it going? Uh, breathing. We're breathing. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> hey, how are you today? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm in my home office, and my newborn uh, four-month-old is in the next room, and she's quiet right now. So, uh, Oh, this is a good thing. Any, yeah. If you hear any hilarity or crying, you'll know what it is. But, uh, but for now, I'm great. We're great. Okay, so let's hop into... Um, what is going on in, in these areas? And, and maybe what we should start off is, is what is Book Baby? What is CD Baby? And what's happening in your neck of the woods? Well, I guess I'll start with CD Baby first because that was the company that started first. Uh, I've been in business about 14 years now. And it started... Um, the founder basically was a musician. He wanted to sell his music online, and at the time, it was the late 90s, he couldn't find anyone to sell his music because he wasn't on a major label. So he basically figured out how to program a little website where he could sell his music. Um, and within months, he had tons of his friends and his fellow musicians saying, hey, we sell my CDs too. So you know, within a year, he kind of accidentally stumbled into a great idea for a company, which is to... Uh, you know, have a service that, that, that serves uh, independent musicians, helps them sell their music, and lets them keep uh, most or uh, uh, most of the profit, um, as opposed to where major labels were taking you know, the lion's share of any royalties and earnings from the music sales. Um, and uh, 15 years later, we're still doing that. We're selling CDs. Uh, we've also gotten into digital distribution, so we're helping artists sell their music on 
uh, download sites like iTunes and streaming sites like Spotify, uh, basically trying to get their music uh, everywhere that matters, um, as well as um, other services. We're getting into sync licensing, helping them, helping artists earn money when their music is used in film and uh, commercials, things like that. Um, and so about a year and a half ago, we had a, a similar idea to do the same thing for authors. So when the ebook phenomenon was really taking off, we started Book Baby. And uh, the idea is very similar. Uh, independent authors can uh, send in their Word document or the PDF, whatever kind of file they have. We'll do all the conversion work to turn it into a really beautiful ebook and send it to all of the ebook retailers that matter. So we get them to Kindle and the iBook Store and Kobo and Copia and Barnes & Noble's Nook and uh, places like that. And we don't keep any of the uh, earnings, pass 100% of the money back to the author. All right. So what you're doing is, I'm hearing you just saying, basically, we're going to fix it, make it look pretty, and then we'll get it to the various distribution channels, and you, dear author, get to keep 100% in your pocket. Is that what I hear? That. That is exactly right, yeah. And, and uh, basically, we're trying to solve a couple problems. One is distribution, obviously, uh, trying to get the author's work into the places that matter, where, where uh, readers are accustomed to going to buy the books they like, uh, as well as this sort of mysterious, uh, frustrating world of ebook formatting and conversion, which uh, you know most, most authors don't know anything about, and they shouldn't really. It's kind of technical, boring nonsense. It's like... You know, our analogy we usually use is you could change your own oil if you really wanted to learn how to do that, but why bother? You can just drive down the street and for a small fee, you get someone else to do it for you. So the way we work it is um, you send in your file to us. You've got a Word document or a PDF or uh, you know, pages, something like that. We've got a team that will uh, do hands-on work to make sure your formatting is correct and that when we uh, do the conversion, it'll come out on the other end looking like a really a uh, beautiful, presentable ebook that'll be, um, you know, not just beautiful on one device, but that uh, the content will be dynamic and work on any of the different e-readers that people are, uh, uh, you know, the popular e-readers today. So wh- let me just ask you about this, the conversion side, because th- this is where things get confused. And I know I've seen some books on e-readers that look really like garbage. Um, and yeah. I don't know if, 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 I mean, to put it bluntly, I, I could have put it be even more bluntly, Chris, but I won't, but that, um, in the garbage, in the garbage bin. And is that just kind of, they did it, it's a did it, do it yourself deal. They dropped in their word document and they let the, the template gods be what they were and, and push the button. That could definitely be the case. Or, you know, if they use another service that may have gone through, you know, one of our competitors uses something called the meat grinder. You basically, they're 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 eating it and they're shooting it out, and and whatever comes out on the other end is is what you get. Um, so, you know, the idea is with Book Baby, we've got a a lot of work up front to to educate the authors on how to best format the document so that it's ready to go. Um, and 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 that could be anything from. Uh, not using the space bar or the tab key to indent your paragraphs, uh, you know, which really makes them look like garbage. Um, there's a you know more proper way to do that. Um, there's a whole bunch of little tips like that that we give our authors up front so that they know uh, the sorts of things that'll potentially cause problems in the conversion process. Um, oh, so if we can okay. eliminate those up front. Let me let me just ask this. So, if you're t- speaking of space bar and all that, so if you're going to, if the author is going to send them you a word document, that you would rather see it in a say straight flush to the left, just paragraph with a double space or something between it, so that you know it's a paragraph, or do you want it indented but doing it a tab indent versus a hit the little space bar? Well, that's really up to the author. I mean, we we want as much as possible the author to have some design control. Um, basically, if you want your paragraphs indented, there's a better way to do it. There's, you know, you use the uh, the paragraph indent function of your word processing uh, program instead of using the space bar or tab key, which usually causes problems in the conversion process. 
All right. So but, you, know, you, you have a guide. You have a guideline that you tell people to do it. So let me talk about a, a PDF. A lot of times, for example, working with authors, as I do all the time, is that once the book's completed, that the, whoever does the layout will typically send the completed PDF, so how the book actually looks when it goes to print, to an ebook type converter. And what do you do in that kind of uh, methodology? When something arrives that way, do you have to do stripping down? Do you have to start all over from scratch? Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not actually the most technically minded person there. I don't do any of the conversion work myself. But the way I understand it is that they, they they don't strip it down to scratch. They can take the PDF. They can remove the element that they think will confuse, confuse the conversion process. Um, uh-huh. And uh, basically, you know, through it, scan through it after they've done that and uh, make sure it looks ready to go. Uh, they're not just throwing these fixed layout documents through the conversion process and then just seeing what happens. You know, they're, they're doing whatever they can to make it um, make it beautiful when it comes out. And, uh, and when it does come out, uh, the authors can have a proof of mm-hmm. the, you know, it's, it's the standard um, e-book format. It's called EPUB. Mm-hmm. So we'll send an EPUB proof to the authors to get to look through it and say, you know, uh, we'll just... This, this looks good, or, the, or I'm concerned about these things, and then they can, uh, you know, address that to our uh, client uh, service team, so we can get it fixed and make it look the way they want. So they have the opportunity to to look at it now. What if they don't have? Because you know, some people don't have e-readers. How do you? I'm assuming you're sending that so they can see what it looks like. So what do you suggest to them to do? Well, to be honest, uh, we really try and encourage everyone to at least borrow an e-reader, an actual e-reader, you know, an iPad, a Kindle, a Nook, something like that, because so many of the questions we get from authors when they call our customer service team is uh, really easily be answered if they just looked at an e-book on an e-reader, uh, you know, to understand the, the ways that you can change the font and change the font mm-hmm. size and oh, yeah. um, the, exactly. the ways in which that make, makes the content itself dynamic so that, um, you know, you're not going to have a fixed design layout. Uh, and, and that gives the the end user, the reader, uh, some custom uh, customization options, and gives them uh, control of their own reading experience. Uh, and I think that is uh, okay, Chris. I'm going to stop. To a lot of yeah. let me stop you right here. We're going to run into a commercial break, and we'll be right back, and we'll deep dive a little bit further. I'm Judith Bryles. With me is Chris Ropley with CD Baby and Book Baby. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good with If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed Jazz, punch, and panache. Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. sell stuff? Do you want to sell books? Lots of them? If yes, you must take credit cards, the most widely used form of payment today. The Free Terminal has created a special program for your guide to book publishing listeners. No contract, all equipment is free. Extremely low rates and no termination fees ever. 
Contact Alan Dean at Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call him at 303-668-6828. The Free Terminal has handled all credit card transactions for both Author U and Judith for over a year. Don't wait another day. Contact Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call 303-668-6828 and tell him you want the no contract Author U deal. Every picture tells a story, and it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, with me this uh, session is Chris Robley. He is the uh, partner uh, Brian Filson, who's with uh, Book Baby, and he is the cat for CD Baby. And I know I'm pounding away on ebooks right now, but <laughs> he's handling it really fine um, with that. But, but I, and I don't want to leave um, the ebook world yet because I do have a few more for questions. One of the um, articles that I came up with was, uh, talked about the projections of the dramatic drop in ebook usage. And it's not that it's going to go away, but it's this, it's the conversion factor that's happening in the evolution in the e-world, but that it's looking at they're projecting almost a 50% drop within the next couple of years of um, e-books being sold and on, on the e-reader. So e-readers will come way down, but the expansion going into the whole tablet world. And, and I know I watch this with my grandkids, Chris, who are uh, seven and nine. And my God, what those kids do whipping around on those tablets is unbelievable. But it's incredible. Yeah. I know. <laughs> oh, I mean, my nine-year-old grandson has his own YouTube channel. Can you imagine? And, <laughs> my go- my girlfriend's nephew picked up my phone the other day. I don't even think he can read yet, and he had to oh, figure out where to find the games and where to download the apps and all that. I know they're they're just amazing little critters. So um, on the the tablets, and I know I'm currently working on a uh, uh, with an author who owns a company called Wicked Goodies, and she makes the most amazing. Uh, this book is all about chocolate modeling um, and cakes, and that we're just ready to go to print here. We'll be off to go to print. The bids are out um, in a couple of days. And the pictures are spectacular, spectacular. I mean, they have to be in play, and you don't want to see this book manipulated around. So it's really not for ebook; It's for tablet world. So mm-hmm. how how does Book Baby work on that and I guess what I'd like to also do is get into so color color is one issue how do we deal with color which is critical and especially children's books color is critical and then how do we get into um, 
uh, uh, the, the cost factor. And then I'm really interested also in that you've mentioned it on the, uploading it to the distributors, where whether it's Kindle, whether it's Nook, whether it's you know um, on the iPad, whether it's in the Kobo and all that. And that you so that's a service. What I'm hearing you say. Let me just start there. That's a service. I hear you say that when people come into the book baby CD realm, uh, CD baby realm, that that's just part of your fee. That when we're done with this, that you get their password so you can upload it into those various channels for them. Is that correct? Well, we actually do all the work, so um, there's no. Uh, there's no really exchanging of, of accounts or anything. The author just sets up one account with us. So they have a book baby account. They upload their book to us. We convert it. And then when we distribute it to all of those various retailers, um, mm-hmm. the author basically just maintains the one account through us and they'll see all of their uh, payments from those various sources uh, all in one accounting dashboard. So they don't have to worry about having uh, an iBook store and a Kindle account and a uh, you know a Kobo account, a separate account for every. If they just work with us, and we'll show them all the information about the sales, the royalty payments, um, things like that in one place. So, Chris, you're telling me that you do this service, and you are now the funnel for these monies coming in, and and you don't keep a percentage to handle that. We don't. Um, you got to be kidding! Wow. <laughs> well, well, I should say we do have a yearly maintenance fee, which is nineteen dollars. Oh, okay. After, Here it comes. Okay. After What's the that? first, yeah, after the first year, uh, it's nineteen dollars. But that allows us to, you know, do what we do and keep our hands out of your earnings. Um, and one of the reasons we were able to do that is because we already had this distribution network set up with CD Baby. We were already partnered with iTunes. Mm-hmm. We already had the different mechanism. Um, so there wasn't as much startup cost in that as there might have been had we just starting from scratch with uh, ebooks. So you're, that, you're, that, so just clarifying for our listeners. So if they process through you, that when it's all done, you do the the shooting up into the stars, so to speak, and mm-hmm. that for a nineteen dollar annual fee, then that all monies come and then they immediately um, that they get to take it out whenever they want, or do you have a, a mechanism on that, how that works? I'm sorry, are you talking about for payments? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, they would set a pay point, uh, and uh, we just collect the royalties, and whenever they've seen, you know, they could say, I want to be paid every $30 or every $100, $1,000. Once their owed balance hits that, we pay them the following Monday. Oh, so potentially, okay. uh, potentially, an author could be getting paid every single Monday night. All right, so they you could so you could go as often as weekly. You could request a weekly payment, or you could put it on a threshold of X amount of dollars coming in, and then you release it on the following Monday, which could be weekly too. It's it's always it's always based on the threshold that you set, um, okay. and then we pay weekly if you have an you know sort of if you've earned enough uh, if you've earned as much as you say you want when you need to get paid. So and you can change that at any time. You know if you have it set at a thousand dollars and you're like ah. I'm owed 600 bucks. I could really use that. Then you just go in and set your pay point at 500 and we'll pay you the next week. Well, well, I'm going to tell you $19 is dirt cheap. And for an annual fee, um, just because I've just gone through all my distribution cost with my book printers and with my book distributor, and I want to choke right now. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking, I'm just printing out all these reports just before we started on this. All right, so let me let me ask you this. Let's get into what's what what does it cost to create um I know there's going to be different levels, but what would it be cost to create a book? So if you have already done the conversion work, you have an EPUB file, which is, you know, not most authors cuz they're no, writers let's, they're let's, not. You know what, Chris, let's not even go there. Let's assume okay. that I've got a book <laughs> book. Let's not let's not even go there. Let's let's uh we've got a book book. And um, whether it's it's someone who's really in the do it yourself or it is my word and I'm a beginning baby and I want to get it out or let's uh, and then and then someone who's had their book laid out professionally is sitting with a PDF. Okay, so if we need to convert it into an EPUB, it's one hundred and forty nine dollar one time setup fee, and that includes the conversion and the distribution. Um, if you want to see a proof of of that, it's two hundred and forty nine dollars. 
Okay. And uh, that that that's a conversion to both EPUB, which is uh, you know used on most of the devices, and Mobi, which would work for Amazon's Kindle. Okay. And then what about color? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, color is fine. Uh, we can do uh, f- up to 50 images is included in either of those packages. If you have more tables, graphs, images beyond that, then uh, we have a you know a, a little bit of an extra fee. I, I forget what it is exactly, but it's on our website. Um, but we can do color, and that's no problem. All right. And so you said you mentioned the website. That would be bookbaby.com, and it's spelled exactly, exactly the way it sounds, bookbaby.com. Yep. To get those fees. So up to 50 images, it's going to be included anywhere from 149 to 249. And I would tell you, skip the 149. You just go for the 249 and get a proof so you know what you're dealing with. Um, exactly. On, all right. So with that, and then anything over 50 images, if, for example, I'm going to go back to my cookbook person who I can tell you we have a lot more than 50 images. So it would be a higher I amount. I just found it on the site. It's, it's $2 per additional image after those 50. All right, that's still a bargain. All right, so two dollars for for additional image. All right, terrific. All right, mm-hmm. now let me let me ask you about some strategies. I know that we're going to be coming up. We're getting close to the bottom of the hour here, but let me let's start in on strategies, and and work on this, um, Chris, a little bit here with me. That you because there's going to be similarity whether it's CDs or it's it's in the um, uh, the book format that what do you see is, for example, the three biggest mistakes that, that authors consistently make? Well, it's, it's funny. Um, whenever I give kind of marketing advice, it always seems very basic and common sense, but, but also something that's usually really overlooked. And, and the first thing is that authors have to embrace the idea that they're responsible for for their marketing, for their networking, for for basically all of it, uh, not just the writing. And musicians have had about to adopt to this mentality, uh, and it seems like authors are about ten years behind still. Um, that would be the first mistake. A lot of people say, "Great, I, I, I wrote my book, I gave it to Book Baby, it's on uh, iBookstore. Why isn't anyone buying it?" They expect sales just because, and and that's mistake number one. No matter for music or or literature. The second one, let's see, I, I, I think... Um, All right, so I'm going to ask you to just hold that and kind of gel it together. Okay. We've got 15 seconds, and so we're going to transition out and, and go to our, um, our, our bottom of the hour break. And with us is today, I'm going to tell everyone, Nick Zillinger, who is a, one of my favorite cover designers and interior designers, will be joining us for a couple of minutes, and we'll be back with Chris. Probably from PDE Baby and Book Baby. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Do you need postcards that make a statement? How about business cards, flyers, brochures, or NCR forms? TuVets is the solution for all your printing needs. Providing services specially designed for authors, we deliver exceptional quality colored printing. Most important of all, we specialize in reducing your printing costs. No more waiting. No more standing in lines at your local printer. Online proofing. With our pricing tools calculator, you can get instant quotes on all your printing products, as well as shipping rates all over the United States. Just a few clicks of the mouse and you're on the way to discovering how easy and convenient online color printing should be. 
Contact our friendly, human account representatives. We recognize that you want answers, not voice prompts. Visit our website at www.tu-vets.com or call 1-800-894-8977. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Hi, we're back, and as always at the bottom of the hour, we have one of our sponsors, and Nick Zellinger of NZ Graphics is with us. Nick does both cover design as well as interiors, and he has a tip on what today, Nick? Well, I'm I'm enjoying the conversation with Chris and and, and just kind of reflecting on on the current conversations with e-books, so just a few little thoughts on on, uh, strategizing with authors about at the beginning of their project, like we talk about, you know, get your ducks in a row first and don't come back and say, oh, by the way, I would like an e-book or, oh, by the way, I have an e-book, but I would like a print book. So you should organize your thoughts and your strategies ahead of time. It'll make it easier for whatever conversion services or graphic designers come into play. For instance, uh, uh, you know, just at the outset of your project, you know, uh, you finish writing your book, you have the discussion with the author about okay. Let's assume that you're going to have a print version and an ebook version. I can't imagine why anyone would not want to have an ebook version at this stage in time. So you you uh, you have that in place so that you, uh, when you're designing, for instance, the cover, uh, you keep those elements in in place for the cover because it's got a you know the cover like we said before has got to pop at the at the print size and it's got to uh, really uh, be uh, dynamic. I mean, at the thumbnail size. So, Nick, I'm just. I mean, this is a selfish question. I'm going to jump in here right now because you know you designed my latest book, author you creating and developing, mm-hmm. building book platforms, and we'll be doing a big launch in March on this. And that is, and I kept thinking, it really, it isn't a book that really is for Eland, but listening to Chris, and if we just think, well, the heck with Eland, we need it really do it for tablets. Yeah, I agree. And I think, uh, to me, that's the, this, this is where it's going. I mean, I, I think Kindles and Nooks and the e-readers, they're going to be around for a while, but the, the surge is going to be to the tablets for books that have a uh, – I mean, they're already there, obviously, but for books that have multimedia content that are more dynamic, they have more color, more pizzazz. I mean, we're already – a much more visually oriented uh, reading society now, so we almost demand to have some visual elements along with our reading. Uh, so I think, you know, the tablet form for uh, with the future of ebooks, that's that's where it's going. So if you have a book like your your book, for instance, which is very interactive, 
uh, not only with visuals uh, and a workbook kind of... Uh, <laughs> and in uh, color. And, in, and color. in color. And just kind of <laughs> uh, breaks the mold of uh, most, if not all, uh, how-to books in terms of authoring. Uh, I think that's it's a perfect example of what we're going to see uh, in, for tablets and e-books. I just think that's that's the future. So maybe we should just make have a conversation tomorrow and we upload this thing to Book Baby and see what they do. Yeah, you can and you know obviously okay. pay for the proof. Anyone should always pay for always get a proof. I think it's a great, you know, it's it's worth the money to do. Um, okay, Chris, okay, Chris you, you got a job coming tomorrow. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks. And I was going to mention, you know, you were talking about multimedia stuff. We can do audio, we can do video, all that sort of stuff is totally possible now with the newest EPUB format. So well, send it you in. Know what? If Nick could stay on a little bit more, because what our listeners don't know, Nick is also a rock and roll band singer. And he had um, CD Baby was responsible for publishing a couple his CDs with his older band. So let's let's hop over to CD Baby if we can and talk about the multimedia and how do you incorporate that. That work? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, I like so to about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, in CD Land or how would someone let's say Nick has his his uh, um, he does a new CD with his 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 current band. So what would they do? What do they send to you, Chris, to create? And what would let and then let's expand that. If an author has an audio version, what do they do? Well, it all depends on what they want. If they actually want a physical CD to sell, then uh, they just have to burn us a, uh, a you know sort of master CD, send it into us, and we'll do the replication or the duplication and send them back uh, however many CDs they want. They could order five CDs or they could order a thousand. If they just want to go the digital route and not worry about physical media, then essentially they just need to upload as high-resolution audio files as they have uh, to their CD Baby account, and we'll do all the similar work to Book Baby to get it ready to send to iTunes and Spotify and, and Amazon's uh, MP3 store and all those kinds of places. So and what and if they wanted the physical CD, um, what would that cost? Oh, let me look it up. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I you know people want to know what this stuff costs, and also does it? I mean, I'm assuming you must have similar breakpoints like you have for the Book Baby one forty nine and two forty nine, and then two dollars for every additional image. Well, to distribute the CD, it's forty nine dollars per album. I know that much. Uh, if, if you wanted to get CDs manufactured. Uh, then they they should get a quote on the site. But um, just to just to to uh, sell your CD, and that includes warehousing of your physical CDs, and we'll ship them out to your customers, um, as well as doing the digital distribution side of things, selling uh, downloads on iTunes and such. That's forty nine dollars per album. Forty nine dollars per album for each album you do that, or just for the one time deal to do that. That's per album. So you know, in the next year or two years from now, if you come out with a new CD, it's another forty nine dollars. Okay, so that's the creation, but I, I, I maybe I'm confused. So let's just say you have a CD and you sell it. What does it cost to sell one CD at a time? Oh, I see. Well, you, you set the price. So if you want to charge $12 for your CD, uh, that's fine. We take um, for physical CDs that we're sending out of our warehouse to your customers directly, we take a $4 uh -huh. cut per CD. So okay. if you charge 12 you'd make eight. If you charge 16, you'd make 12. Um, for downloads that you sell either on cdbaby.com because we have a, mm -hmm. a, a music retail store or uh, through iTunes or Amazon or, or any of our partners, we keep a 9% uh, commission. Got it. Okay. And, so and those, those are generally, you know, 99 cents per song or 9.99 for album. Those kind of standard prices for downloadable music. I, I hope you have a good accounting team to keep track of all of this. <laughs> we do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going. We've been, mine... we've, we've, we've just pay, uh, let's see. I think it was last month we paid out 250 paid out 250 million dollar to artists. Wow. Gee, Nick, I'm sorry you're not one of those. Well, I got my uh, I got my 99 cents here and there through, uh, but we we did that. That's what we did. We actually had a duplication service somewhere else package and master our CD, but then we 
did up have an account with CD Baby, and then we sold it through digitally through to iTunes. And I think you're right; it was like 99 cents a song or something. But for us, it was like it is like the office for us. It was distribution. It was it was getting into the marketplace. Uh, along with the thousands of other musicians that did that, and that was very, uh, uh, really legitimized us a lot. So, I mean, it was a huge, I mean, that was a quantum leap for musicians to be able to get their music online uh, in, into the marketplace. Well, that, I mean, it's a whole new world to me. I have to, I have to say that, um, enjoying that. So, how big, Chris, is the audio world? It's huge. Um, you know, we just CD Baby alone, we have almost 400,000 artists that work with us. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't know how many million tracks that is. It's probably 10 million mm-hmm. tracks or something like that. We've, we've sent to iTunes and providing iTunes with about a quarter of their catalog. So you supply to the court of the catalog, and so um, I, I know when uh, Daniel Hall was on a week ago, he was talking about it as a billion-dollar industry. It sounds like it's bigger than that to me. It could be bigger if you're if you're doing two hundred and fifty million. So what do you think? Or did we lose Chris? Mm. <clears throat> Might have. Might have. Okay, so Nick, Sabrina, you need to see if we can get him back. And let's, Nick, you and I can talk. So on that, what what are your challenges with, and when you have authors come in, so you mentioned that, that they need to have from the get-go, I want to have an e-book or, or ta- you know, a tablet formation for it. Yeah, we have, there are a lot of challenges right now because the, the there is no standard there is no standard format in place, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon. When you have Kindle uh, uh, and Mobi being a proprietary uh, platform for the Kindle, but then you have things like EPUB 3 coming out now, which is going to, uh, you know, in, have an enhanced uh, readership for um, um, tablets and iPads and stuff like that, which is really where, the, like I mentioned before, is where the trend is, seems to go because it's more, more multi, multimedia content. So the mm-hmm. challenge is, uh, how do you want your ebook to look? I mean, some authors may have a brand in place for their print version, and they want to extend that to their ebook version. And you know, most of the autom- mostly all the online converters, like Chris mentioned, are not going to be able to handle that. This is customized work. So right off the bat, authors need to know that uh, ebook conversion takes a little longer for quality work, just like anything else does. If you really want your e- your book to look possibly as close as the printed version or similar or maybe different. Uh, and, and and be willing to accept that on that, especially the difference. And I know that a lot of the authors that you and I work with have a lot of extensive customization in their interiors. All right, we're going to be right back. Chris is, is back with us. So we're going to come back and finish on those biggest mistakes. I'm Judith Riles. You're listening to your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Do you sell stuff? Do you want to sell books? Lots of them? If yes, you must take credit cards, the most widely used form of payment today. The Free Terminal has created a special program for your guide to book publishing listeners. No contract. All equipment is free. Extremely low rates and no termination fees ever. Contact Alan Dean at Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call him at 303-668-6828. The Free Terminal has handled all credit card transactions for both author you and Judith for over a year. Don't wait another day. Contact Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call 303-668-6828 and tell him you want the no contract author you deal. shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. 
You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need The Book Shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today we offer digital black and white and four color high speed inkjet printing, a cost effective way to introduce color into your short run titles. We of course offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in house from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types including side sewing we provide warehousing kitting distribution inventory management a new print on demand facility streaming browser based ebooks and bookstore call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project you can also visit our website at www.tps1.com Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, in our final segment, we're going to talk a, some marketing strategies, and we're also going to tap in on blogging. And this is to promote your ebooks and your CDs and audio and all the multimedia that you would be incorporating as an author with your products. And at the bottom of the hour, we were addressing the biggest mistakes that Chris Robley, who is the um, head of, of uh, CD Baby, had, comes up with, and that the first one was that authors need to get it through their head, as all artists do, that they're responsible for marketing, period. Don't count on anybody else unless you're hiring somebody to really do it, but you're going to be the pusher marketing. So what's number two, Chris? Yeah, yeah. The first one, don't be a hermit. Don't be a tortured genius that thinks you don't have to lift a finger for marketing. Uh, number two is actually the reverse of that. Um, which is you you say, okay, I've got to do my own marketing. What does that entail? And you look up online or you ask some experts and suddenly you're bombarded with, uh, you know, you've got to be on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. You've got to blog. You've got to go to conferences. You've got to whatever else, do a blog tour, do a book tour, do readings. And the next thing you know, you're basically crippled yourself because you it's too much. You don't know what to do. So my advice there is just pick Pick two or three of those things, the ones that sound the most enticing to you, the ones you think you could do the best, um, and start there. Do them for four to six months, get it, get a, you know, get a handle on it, and then expand from there. But I see so many people just throw their hands up and say, I can't do it, when really what, they can't do everything, of course, but if you, if you just mm -hmm. you know, picked a few, you'd, you'd, be, you'd be great. You'd really start well, to see results. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had a conversation with one of my clients who, who did some things this morning, and I said to Debbie, I said, you know what, your book is a Google Plus book, it's a LinkedIn book, creating a group, and, and Twitter, it's not a Facebook book, don't put your energy on, in that format, it's, it's you're, you're after this business side that you're doing, and you're not a Pinterest a person, I mean, and it really mm -hmm. does help when you can narrow it down. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, especially Facebook is becoming a little bit more uh, difficult to get a handle oh. on how how to use it. Uh, so, well, it's so schizophrenic. More broadly applicable. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's Facebook is schizophrenic to me. I mean, it doesn't know who it is and what it wants to be, and it's almost like, oh my God, it's Monday and it's March, so let's try something new and wipe everybody out. It's nuts to me. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's nuts. Okay. So it be selective. So cherry pick. And what would be number three? I think number three is that when you don't, uh, you know, this applies to music or books, b- between your promotion cycles, you know, you, let's say your your new album or your newest book or, is kind of old now. It's been a year or so. Um, artists tend to go back to the creation mentality and they say, okay, I've got to, I've got to record my next album after I'm in my next book. And they forget about uh, that promotion is sort of an, an ever an ongoing endeavor and that there's ways in which they can share the, that creative process with their fans and with their readers uh, to get them engaged, to get them invested um, and, and make them feel like part of the process. So when that next product comes out, not only do they, you know, still have their fans, but they've, they've already sort of primed the pump and those people are ready to go and buy that book or that CD. So what you're saying is that with your followers, whether on Twitter or Google Plus or fill in the blank, that if you share the, say, the agony and the defeat and the safety along the way, that your followers are going to buy in and be ready to cheer for you and hopefully with their credit card. Absolutely, yeah. And, and not just telling them about the process, but really trying to find ways you can include them, whether that be you know, asking for their opinion, maybe that they can be beta readers of your book or um uh you know if you've got a song you say hey what do you think of this mix versus this mix you know you, you like the mm-hmm. one where the drums are louder or the one where the vocals are louder and and really get people to to make creative decisions uh, on your behalf you know you don't always have to listen to them of course but at least they felt like you've respected them enough uh and they've played some part in it and and they're part of the process so what you're doing is that you can let your online contacts become your personalized, customized focus group. Yes, exactly. And, and you bring that to that does, Another thing that does is uh, it, it's essentially feeding all of your social media profiles. And, and if you come up with one good question to ask about, you know, let's say you share it a chapter long and on your say this, this was held a right. It took me so long. And this character, I'm not sure if this works. What do you think? Now, mm-hmm. That's just not. That's not just on your blog, but that's probably worth five or six tweets. Uh, that's worth a couple Facebook posts. You know, you, you spread it out, and all of a sudden, you've created one thing that's feeding all your fans everywhere that they exist online. Mm-hmm. And, which is critical to do, I think. All right, so let's. That's uh, all. All excellent advice, and I, I certainly support that. I know that uh, one of my clients who I was talking to, who we said I talked to him, I, I encouraged him to uh, take his first chapter, which was really good. It was really meaty. It was just too long. Do a divvy up in it, and it's really expanded it into its own, each own entity, and it's much more solid in that. And now we're reaching out because we're going to change the subtitle of the book, and he's got all these people he's working with. Um, and I just said, let's ask them. I mean, they love you. They know what your work is. Why don't you get their input and, and do that? Let's jump over to the to your blogs because you wanted to talk about in blog engagement. So what are your thoughts there? Yeah, well, I mean, I mentioned one of the things already is that if you start on your blog with everything, you know, put all your ideas uh, there first and then uh, let that feed your social media efforts. That's, that's one thing that just sort of saves you some time and keeps you sane. Make sure you're putting stuff up there every week. Um, it doesn't have to be a giant essay. It could just be a photo or, uh, you know, Twitter just came out with this little um, video app where you can take tiny six-second videos so I did one. I said, you know, here's my writing desk, and here's a uh, pinup board of my um, uh, what would you call it? My uh, submissions to to uh, literary reviews and stuff, and and uh, I put that on Twitter, and you know, I'm going to put it on my blog. And there's lots of little things you can do that that really just take five minutes, but um, go a long way in terms of consistency. So you're hitting your fans every single week with with stuff that says, hey, I'm here, I'm alive, I'm I'm working. So, and where would you, our listeners get the the Twitter app? Oh, it's where called they, Vine. Where they, say it again. V-I-N-E, 
Vine, and they can get it on the uh, App Store from on their iPhone. So what they do is they download it from from the App Store, and they've got six seconds to do their glory, and then how do they tag it into their Twitter feed? Well, it's really easy, and and another thing you do. So basically, how it works is you touch your screen as you, when you want it to record. So you can. It doesn't have to be all six seconds at once. You could take um, lots of little shots that add up to six seconds. But basically, once you're done and you're happy with what you've created, uh, it's just a click of a button. It'll say, "Do you want to share this on Facebook? Do you want to share this on Twitter? And do you want to share this on Vine, which is a sort of, you know, separate um, film okay. clip side of Twitter?" Um, and that's it. And and the next thing you know, it's up on your Twitter feed. So, and then what, how does it handle if you have multiple Twitter feeds? Is it able to go into multiple channels or you just have to select one? Do you know? Oh, for those Vine videos, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can put it to multiple places. You can put it up on Facebook and Twitter and Vine. No, um, I get that. But, I, what, but what if you have multiple Twitter feeds since it's this Vine Oh, oh I, I see. Mm-hmm. Then probably, you know, may, maybe the quickest way, there might be a, need, uh, a more technical way to do it, but um, I would just put it on one and then go to that actual Twitter feed and, and uh, um, you oh, know. retweet uh, it. Uh, yeah, retweet, retweet it. Retweet it from over. your other accounts, right. Got and it. And another I, thing I, you can do. <laughs> Go ahead. You can also embed that tweet on your blog. So um, suddenly, not you know, you've created a video that's on Vine. You put it on Twitter. You take that tweet. You put it in a blog post, and and you're done for the week. Oh, that sounds terrific. So here's the wise advice that Chris is doing. A lot of people think that they've got to do these massive long blogs. I know my blogs are long, but I've got, I know on Monday I do more of a content blog. On Thursday I do, here's my top 10 tweets of the week, and on Friday they have a video blog. So each one, and, and, you know, those are three minutes worth that I shot a whole bunch at once, and I re, I'm releasing one every week before I start making some more. But the thing is that that has always been consistent in the successful bloggers and these, these blogs that grow and gather people is that they are consistent and committed. So if you're going to do it every Monday, you do it every Monday. Would you say that's right, Chris? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, and you know, it's obviously great to do large, longer pieces, but if you can't, you know, if you're busy, if you've got a day job or whatever it is that's keeping you from having, maybe you wanted to spend that time revising your novel instead, it, it's, it helps to have lots of options for smaller blog posts. Oh, exactly. Well, Chris, I want to thank you for being with us. I, you know, I was disappointed when Brian said, oh, my God, I have an emergency. And I went, oh, no. <laughs> but you've been great. And, and I'm, this and is a crazy season, but I'm happy to be here. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And we'll have you back again. All right. Awesome. So this Thank you is, so much. You're welcome. This is Judith Bryles, and we, as we wrap up here, I just want to remind everyone, the Author You Extravaganza is coming up fast. It's May 2nd through 4th. It will be in Denver, Colorado. Guy Kawasaki, who will be on with us next week, the author of Ape, author, publisher, and entrepreneur. He will be kicking off Kevin Breyerman, Publishers Weekly Publisher, as well as 20 three other amazing speakers. OfferU.org is your information. This is Judith Files. Talk to you later. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr.